All right, so here's the answer key for the demand exercise that was going to be done uh, by February 5th. So uh, the first question says, the price of cereal goes up. What happens to the demand for milk and cereal? So the first thing that we need to look at is the price of cereal going up. So what we're going to do is we're going to label our graph with price and quantity and draw ourselves a demand curve in here. And this demand curve, uh, again, you can just kind of draw it anywhere and we're going to then work with it. So we need to have an original cereal price and an original quantity. And then from there, what we're going to do is we're going to go back and it says the price of cereal goes up. So what we need to do is draw a new price that's an increase, label with a P2 and a Q2, because we now have a new quantity. And then from there, you're going to see that we went from Q1 to Q2, which is showing a decrease. If we're buying less cereal, how are cereal milk related? Cereal and milk are complements, they go together. So if we're buying less cereal, we're going to see that we're going to buy less milk. So the demand for milk would decrease. If we move on to number two, again, we label our graphs because that's always the first thing that you should do. And let's draw ourselves an original demand curve. We have an increased life expectancy, which suggests that the population of older people will increase. So what's going to happen to the demand for retirement communities? So if we have more people, the population has increased, that's going to cause demand to increase for retirement communities. Number three is very similar to number one. So it says the price of paint goes up. What happens to the demand for paintbrushes and paint? So we're going to work with our paint graph first. And that first sentence says the price of paint goes up. So we'll draw ourselves an original demand and an original price line. Price of paint goes up. We're going to draw an arrow up from our original price line, draw ourselves a new price line and a new quantity line. And we're seeing that if paint goes up, we're going to buy less paint. And that should make sense logically. We're, if paint costs more, we're going to buy less of it. So then from there, we need to go to our paintbrushes graph. Paint and paintbrushes go together. So if we're buying less paint, we're going to buy less paintbrushes. The fourth one says the price of cheer detergent decreases. What happens to the demand for cheer? What happens to the demand for Tide? So the first thing that it tells us to look at is the price of cheer. So we'll start with our cheer graph, draw ourselves an original demand curve and original price line. Price of cheer detergent decreases. So we need to show a decrease in the price. So put your new price line below the first one. And you'll see that as price goes down, we're going to end up buying more cheer. If we're buying more cheer, what does that mean that's going to happen to Tide then? Well, if we have an original demand curve and cheer and Tide are substitutes, what we're going to do is we're going to buy less Tide because we are substituting with the cheaper cheer. For number five, consumer income increases. What happens to the demand for bologna and the demand for steak? So on our bologna graph, we know that bologna is an inferior good. So what we're going to say is if we have more income, we're not going to spend our money on bologna. We're instead going to spend our money on something else. So we're showing a decrease in demand for bologna. And if we look over at the steak graph, again, make sure you put price and quantity on there. We have an original demand curve. If we have more income, steak is a, uh, a normal good or sometimes considered a luxury good. So if we have more income, we're going to try to buy more steak and it just tastes better. With the invention of compact disc players, what happens to the demand for records?
we're going to see a decrease in the demand for records because CDs have replaced the records. So that's new technology has come out to replace the old technology. For number seven, at the end of August, when Northeastern Junior College is back in session for the fall semester, what happens to the demand for pizza? So again, make sure you're always starting out with price and quantity. Draw your original demand curve in there. If there is more population in town to eat pizza, the demand for pizza should increase. So you draw yourself an increase in demand.